One, recording. So I'm just going to have everybody uh, <laughs> introduce themselves so that we can uh, get to know each other. It's a, I like this event because it's a real networking event. We get a chance to actually have a conversation and talk to one another and do our haves and wants. And so, um, so we're recording it and people are watching it later. Uh, they'll still kind of get to know you and they'll be able to contact you uh, if they have something that you need or they they need something that you have. And so, um, Jack, I'm going to have you start since you are guest of honor, man of the hour. Uh, just kind of tell us a like a 30 second uh, real estate bio on you and then what you have and what you're looking for. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks for the uh, thanks. Uh, thanks, Emma, for, you know, allow me to come and attend the meeting tonight. So uh, like everybody, like indicated, I live here in Salt Lake City. I live in Lehigh to be a little more precise. And um, I've been doing real estate for basically about 11 years now. I started in Idaho uh, with single families and then moved to other places. Uh, our properties basically in Idaho, Utah. Utah is my primary residence, but in Utah too. Uh, and Texas and Arizona. Uh, I started with single family, but four years ago, I started focusing on multifamily. Uh, right now, uh, I have over 1,000, about 1,100 uh, multifamily that, you know, are both, some are, I'm a general partner, some are a passive investor. On. That's a 30, 30 second introduction. <laughs> that works. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So what what do you have Enough that you curious. offer and I'm, what is it that you're looking for? I'm looking for deals. I'm really, really looking for properties. So you got anything, please let me know. I'm looking for opportunity to partner up. So you find a deal, let's join a hand and take it down. You know, um, uh, 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 I'm looking for anything. Uh, at this point, I'm only focusing 150. 50 units or more, 1980 or newer. Of course, with the exception to Utah and Idaho, because, you know, Utah and Idaho are kind of like my hometown, so uh, those rules does not apply. But any other state, you know, it has to be at least 150 units and one and building 1980s or new. Or late 70s, different location, like it's a premium location, late 70s would work. Okay. Yes. Nice. All right. So... I'm going to go next real quick. <laughs> Thanks, Jack. So, um, mm -hmm. Jack, when did I meet you? About a year and a half ago or so? Yes, yes. About a year and a half ago, yes. Uh -huh. I think I was looking at a project that was way too big for me to handle. And one of our right. mutual friends introduced us and said, hey, I know a guy mm -hmm. who invests in multifamily. Um, and so we went and caught some lunch. And at the time, I think you were doing a capital raise for your... Phoenix deal. Dallas. Phoenix? It was Phoenix. Okay. Dallas Phoenix deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yes. um, I just got to know a little bit more about you. And I thought, man, this guy has a lot of experience. <laughs> like, where's this guy been hiding? Right. And so over the last year and a half, um, I bought my first large multifamily. Frank and I bought it together. And then I bought another couple of them in Little Rock and just looking very hard to pick up some more. And here's Jack sending. Oh, I've just bought another one in Houston. Oh, I got another one in Houston under contract. It's just you just keep scaling, <laughs> but but I feel like I I'm going to keep up with you, you know. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's, let's probably make that happen. I just feel like um, like watching you from a year and a half ago to where we've kind of both both going here. Same right. deal. I'm looking for deals. I'm looking for partners. I'm always looking for capital. I mean, yes. if you find something, let's just partner up and go and, and make it happen. So that's kind of where I am too. And my my give um, is I just love to have calls with people. Like you have a question or you have a problem or you have an opportunity or just want to talk about business or real estate. I just, I'm on calls with people all day long. And so sometimes it's you're going to offer me um, – something that I can use or you're going to introduce me to somebody or it just, it all goes around, uh, you know, karma. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. Um, Frank, do you want to go next? Sure. So my name is uh, Frank Padalano. I am a podcaster and a syndicator. We have uh, the Cashflow Kings podcast 
And uh, I'm out there trying to do deals each and every day, talking to people. Right now, we're negotiating a 53-unit new build in North Carolina. Nice. Uh, I would, yeah, we'll see if it works out, but uh, it seems pretty cool. Um, I do a lot of uh, smaller house flipping and uh, long-term holds in my local Rhode Island market. But besides that, I am not geography-specific. Uh, I have syndication deals that I'm invested in as a GP and as a limited partner uh, across uh, seven or eight states right now. Um, my philosophy on that is that I could be uh, right on a few and wrong on one or two, and that's okay. Uh, I will stay away from the super hot markets, but uh, I like growing markets that have jobs, etc. cetera. Uh, besides that, I'm willing to discuss uh, anything on any deal. I've been investing for over a decade. I have a background in school teaching. And uh, I don't know if Emma agrees, but an all-around decent guy to chat with. <laughs> well, one cool thing about Frank is that he is a full-time real estate investor, so definitely was able to retire early off of that income that he makes. Nice. So I think it took you, what, you say four years? Yeah, it took me a few years. It's hard to tell. I think I could have I went faster if I, if I took more risks. I took yeah. some risks, but not enough, and I didn't, I didn't grow in some of the right ways, but I've learned from it. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm always doing these little side things. I always like trying out new projects, stuff like that. Yeah. No, you, you definitely know how to feed yourself with real estate, um, which is, which is cool to watch. So thank you, Adrian, Amy, either of you want to go next? I'll go next. Go for it. So I'm Amy Madsen Hetzel and, um, I have four single family homes in Salt Lake. And I am eager to learn. Um, like I said, I am investing in my education in real estate right now, and I want to grow and jump in. And I would like to connect with people and um, learn more wherever I can. And my daughter's here too. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't met her yet. <laughs> oh, yeah. She, she is a fireball. And well, she's a great helper. That's my element. <laughs> that's been the nice thing for me because I homeschool my kids. And so with coronavirus, if they come busting into the screen, nobody cares. They before <laughs> they were like, why are your kids here? It's so professional. But now it's like, oh, my kids are here too. <laughs> yeah, it's just the normal these days. Yeah, I'm loving it. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Next up. Okay. Um, I'm Adrian Donner. Hey, Emma. It's been a while. Been a while. Um, I have just dabbled in a lot of areas. Right now, I am full time working with a couple other investors. We're focusing mostly on um, single family, but we've opened up in five markets, um, working with some other investors. So right now, we have couple under contract in Oregon and um, two in Utah and one in Idaho. Um, and then we've got some working in Miami and Jacksonville. Nice. Um, so yeah, that's fun. And then, you know, we're, I'm still always looking at apartments and um, like storage units, stuff like that. So. Yeah. Adrian helped me out. Oh, what's going to be about two, three months ago, starting to look at, starting to get through the bottleneck of deals that people send. Cause like Jack, you were saying earlier, it's just a waste of time to look at most of them. And so you got to screen, 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 screen. And so she was helping me kind of pile through that process. Um, nice. It's hard. Cause you see a thousand deals and you just don't have time to look at them all. And you're always afraid you're going to miss the good one. Cause most of it's garbage. <laughs> You could stop calling them deals. Oh, a deal is just two, I'll buy two, with you. People, two potential people opportunities. Yeah, we need a better word because a deal is just like a thing. It's right? like We're talking about like a good deal. <laughs> you know, a deal just means that like you came to an agreement. <laughs> it could be a bad agreement. There you go. <laughs> it's true. So I was telling Jack earlier, like the purpose of this meetup. Um, we have a lot of people who join us who are looking to become passive investors. 
and maybe are a little bit overwhelmed by how to read all the numbers and vet the projects that they're going to invest in and how to vet the owners. It's a lot of money. It's not insured. It just makes people pretty nervous. And so, so we also have a lot of active investors here who are looking to raise more capital. And the point of it is to put people in the same room. So if you have capital or you have a deal so you can hook up and, and get more deals done, I, I found that I was frustrated because I felt like people kind of keeping their capital partners like, no, oh, this is my guy, he's in my back pocket. And we don't talk about it, we don't share it. And I feel like there's not, there's the abundance mindset in people are like, oh, there's enough money to go around, there's plenty of money to go around, but nobody will uh, tell you where it is or help you find it. And so um, I put this group together so we could all learn from one another about how to look at deals, how to invest in deals, and basically like a dating service um, for, for knowing what active investors need to say to passive investors and vice versa so that they can get some stuff done. And Jack, that was what I was telling you is that I love the way that you just keep buying stuff. I don't see you oversharing on social media. You don't even seem very active on social media. And, and yet you are able to raise millions of dollars <clears throat> to go buy apartments. And so I've just been fascinated at what, how do you do that? And so I thought everybody here could, could learn from your process on how you just are so productive um, without having a, this big thought leadership platform or putting yourself out there as a guru. So why don't you tell us a little bit more about, about your background and how you, how you're, a, acquiring these properties and how you are paying for them. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So definitely there's a lot more going to, into you know, acquiring a property. You know, you know it, all, it, all, it all starts way, way before, before you acquire the property, right? Kind of laying the groundwork in terms of, you know, uh, how to source the deal itself and thinking also when, once you get the deal, how you're going to structure it and, uh, uh, I spent a great deal, believe it or not. Um, so, yes, indeed, I'm not active on Facebook. And it's not by design that I've not been act active. It's just that, you know, I just have a million things to, on my to-do list, right? And so uh, I'm, a still, I'm still a strong believer in that true one-on-one -on -one with somebody, you know, that 30-minute conversation, you know. You know, if, if for example, you know, uh, uh, I can have a true 30 minute conversation with you, you know, and then have a deal, you know, uh, one month from now or whatever time it is, two months from now, you know, you are going to remember me because that 30 minutes is going to be a very, very, you know, you know, uh, memorable conversation because I try to, you know, have true attention, share with you who I am, be absolutely honest and transparent with you. But, you know, um, I think the first thing to recognize is that this is, is a team spot, right? So in order for you to execute, you know, it's all team. And also the other thing to also realize is that it's a big pie. You know, everybody can have a piece of it. Don't try to have the entire pie by yourself. Don't try to have a big pie. Just be willing to share. And as long as you're willing to share the pie, and you're willing to be a little generous, you know, as they would always say, if you give, you'll get back in abundance. I'm a strong believer in that. And that very key with the partners and everybody you're working with so that, you know, you always think about the next one. You know, we work on this thing. Uh, it's all a matter of not just this one, but the next deal and the next deal after that. I spent uh, a good amount of time doing other things. So I did like to attend. Uh, close it down. Sorry. <laughs> you guys probably can hear the kids. You know, my house is always, you know, it's kind of like uh, the neighborhood uh, hanging spot for all the kids in the neighborhood. So <laughs> my house is on the corner. So all the kids, like right now, have, like three neighbors running up and down, you know. Anyway, hide and seek that is. <laughs> anyway, so uh, so I'm, I'm a strong believer in spending a good chunk of your time laying the groundwork, you know, meeting people. You know, uh, social media is definitely one of the avenues, but it's not the only avenue. As a matter of fact, you know, if you look, if you just rewind the time to six years ago, people still getting deals done, but there were no social media. 
you know, I mean, I mean, there was social media, but it's not big the way it is right now, right? Or 10 years ago, yes, there was social media, but it's become more and more and definitely something, I gotta be honest, I'm gonna have to figure out how to utilize down the line. But so far, I've just been able to get the same thing done other ways. I'll give you, for example, when somebody, you know, friend requests me on social media, I would accept, but I would send them a direct message, right? Say, hey, kind of, I would read their profile, like, hey, so and so, at least know who they are. And then, you know, kind of initiate a conversation with them saying, hey, you know, thanks for the Facebook invite, right? Because a lot of people, you know, your friend requests them, they accept and no message at all, right? But, you know, when you go and somebody friend requests you and you just do not accept it, but then you send them a personal message, you know, having gone through their profile, for example, hey, so-and-so, nice to meet you, thanks for, you know, uh, uh, you know, send me friend requests. I see we have a lot of mutual friends in common. I see that, for example, you live in Tampa. How is the real estate market in Tampa, right? Or how is your real estate business going right now in the middle of COVID-19? So you have that conversation. And depending on how that conversation goes, usually, uh, it would lead to into you know let's let's have a formal phone call introduction, and then we'll have a form, formal phone call and just have a lengthy conversation, and so it's no longer becoming just somebody you met on Facebook, but now you've gone beyond that Facebook. So, indeed, as you can see, I'm just kind of you know hide, hiding in a plain sight. So I go there and kind of have more direct connection. So I kind of pull people to the side. I don't engage them on the social media, right? But I pull them to the side, and I just feel like uh, the conversation go a lot further. The other thing I also do is, you know, for example, last year I spent I spent a good chunk of my time. Like last year, I pretty much attended almost every month. I was attending um, some kind of multi-family event from LA to you know Texas to everywhere, you know, you know Colorado. I think you and I went to you know Adam Adams raising money summit. I met people that, thank you, son. Um, I met people, um, Adam Adams. There's a guy, for example, I was talking to, I, I have a number of people that I've been talking to uh, since then. There's a guy I was just been texting back and forth today with, we we're trying to do a deal together. And that's because, you know, for example, when I went to Adam Adams, you know, I connect with people, but a key chunk of my work is not just that 15 minute phone call. I usually, send a follow-up email and a follow-up text say hey nice meeting you at so-and-so event uh, you know i remember we spoke about this let's try to have a follow-up phone call and then you have more detail because usually at things like conference like that raising money summit you know everybody trying to get everybody's card with you know as many cards as possible right and then once you get the card what do you do with it that's the biggest chunk of the work now you know taking it and having a more detailed conversation. It usually take me two, two to three weeks after the event, uh, such event is done, for me to be done with all the follow-up phone calls that I have to do. And one of the things I do in order for me to acquire uh, more deals is, you know, I can only meet, it's only me, I only have 24 hours in a day. So it's only me, you know, I can only talk to a, a finite number of people in a day. But what if I can get, you know, a co-sponsor here and a co-sponsor there, and they can meet other people, and all of a sudden we do a deal. So when I go to events like Adam Adams, I'm not just looking for passive investors. As a matter of fact, I am more more interested in people that want to sponsor deal than passive. Because if somebody wants to sponsor deal, right, you get to know who they are, what they're looking for. I go find a deal. Because right now, one of my problem is going through deals. I get so many leads, it's very hard to keep up. And when I get that deal, you know, I have a long list of people that I've spoken with in the past. I just reach out to them and say, hey, I got this deal in such a place. Would you be interested in joining me? And, you know, we take it down. So all of a sudden, I might have met only five passive investors, you know, at Adam Adams, right? But then I met somebody else who also met five, and now all of a sudden that's 10. Well, if I met 20 and they also met 20, that's another, another 10. But also another thing is also the kind of co-sponsor, you know, you want to bring in. So, you know, at least for my level, uh, when, when you're talking to a co-sponsor, you always kind of have to gauge their capability because, you know, how about you tell me like, yes, I can raise a million and they end up not raising a single penny, you know, yes. which I don't blame them because, you know, 
people sometimes tell you, yes, I can invest hundred thousand dollars in a deal. When you find a deal, they have very the personal reason, family reason, or they just you know develop cold feet or something, right? And so uh, when I'm talking to potential co-sponsors, so when I talk to somebody, I gauge kind of based on the conversation with them, I try to gauge exactly what are they looking for? Do they love their job? Do they just want to passively invest? Or are they planning on retiring? Or what is exactly their goal? But even people that are just love their job sometimes also have great access to other people, right? So it's a matter of educating them and showing them the benefit of coming into a deal as a co-sponsor because then all of a sudden, if they can tap into their network of co-workers and family and whoever else they can bring into a deal, it helps a lot. They might have not been planning on being a co-sponsor, but you show them the benefit of being a co-sponsor, co-GP uh, co in this case, uh, and show what they can get. And then they realize that they're just sitting on a big pile of you know, great passive investors. Boom. They can tap into it without making much effort and um, get it done like that. So uh, I, I attend a lot of events, all those networking events, uh, 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 because I'm a strong believer in that face-to-face -face connection. I prefer that because just that's how I've done. Uh, I've recently started building my website. I have my website up and running, but it's kind of still right now, still work in the progress. So when you go there, there's really not much to do. But at least can show you my portfolio, some of the projects I've worked on. My goal down the line is to be able, basically be able to use it more and more to generate. Uh, and of course, you know, other, other events, you know, uh, I try to go to some of those, you know, targeted events, you know, I remember attending, um, um, I went to Vegas to attend uh, um, ABBA, I'm not sure if you, ABBA is one of those, you know, agency lenders, you know, dust lenders, and they're an event in Vegas, and you wouldn't expect, you know, it's just a lender, but it's more or less other things you get out of it, right? You know, when I talk to brokers, for example, I've had brokers bring me equity partners, you know, uh, you know, and basically every point of interaction people that I interact with, you know, I let them know what I do. They understand me and we figure out how we can do a deal together. So I'll, I'll put I'll come to a stop. I'll just see what other questions somebody might have. Yeah, go ahead and uh, pop in if you have questions. I had a couple of questions. Uh, okay. If anybody want to, I have a couple. Of, if you want to go uh, first, for it. great. Go ahead, Emma. Um. So the the one thing I'm seeing is a follow up. You're, mm -hmm. you're not very dedicated about the follow up, and most people that's their biggest struggle. Like you said, they come home with a pile of business cards. A month later, yeah. they away. <laughs> so what I've been struggling with recently, I actually just gave a talk about this to our local RIA is about how to get more technical in your networking and keep everything straight so that you can do the follow up and the nurturing the way that these relationships need to grow. So I'd love to hear more about um, how you keep track of it and when if how much is in your memory and how much is uh, on paper so that when something happens and you're like, oh, I remember I had this phone call with somebody. Well, what if it was six months ago and you have phone calls with somebody every day and how do you keep track of all that and follow up with the right people so one one of the tools i use is this um app called camcard you probably had a yes had about it for scanning business but mm -hmm. i'm not sure if you notice but you can also add notes on that deal so what i would do i would scan it through my phone and then log into my laptop uh into the uh, into the website for the for the app itself and that a note, and and this is very important, especially when you attend event like, you know, you got those really big uh, multifamily event, for example, you know, I, I attend Road Cliff event early this year in January, for example. Every single night, you know, when I get back to my room, I would can scan them because that's the best way to remember when it's still fresh off your mind. Like, you know, I got this card. I remember I spoke with this person. I enter the information. Right. I, I I scan it into this cam card. Enter North Cliff, you know, Los Angeles. You know, I remember about this. They're from this place. You know, whatever information I can remember about it. And that kind of help when you do that follow up email with them, like, you know, uh, two, three days later after the conference is over, right? You send up that email, email to them, like, hey, thanks, you know, 
I remember, you know, for example, you were looking for deals in, you know, um, uh, Dallas, you know, and um, I'm looking forward to doing a deal with you in Dallas. Or I know you are look, you have deals in Tampa, looking for for doing a deal with you in Tampa. And a key part of that also is, you know, and this is extremely critical. I live in Salt Lake City. I can't go to Tampa for every single opportunity, right? But by the fact that I remember that, and you know, if, usually if somebody who's serious and they're trying, because you you always know when somebody is serious, because they they're gonna get back to you. But you know, because uh, if they're hungry, you know, somebody reach out to them, they'll definitely respond back to you. And you know, you have that follow up conversation. You know, say two months later, a broker bring me a deal in Tampa. I now have a Rolodex where somebody can reach out to say like, hey, I have this deal. I'm very interested in go take a look at it for me, right? So it, help, it also helps with that regard. I don't have to go all over the country looking for deals. See, because I met people, I've had conversation. Initially, I try to have more than one because, you know, let's face it, everybody have, have their own interest. And sometimes you can bring somebody a deal, you know, like say, go take a look at this and they turn around and snatch it away from you. So you usually I want to have more than just one conversation with them before I bring them a deal is so together you know somebody gonna trust their sixty thousand with dollars with me it cannot be just somebody they met at a cliff event and never hear back from again right it's gotta be more than that so there's always those kind of follow-up conversation and i i try to follow up with anybody who follow back with me you know so i would send an email I'll uh, send a text. I'm not going to send text all the time, but I will send a text. And then uh, if they respond, then I have a follow-up conversation. But if they don't, then, you know, I know they're busy. I don't, I don't, I let them, you know, have their time. And when they're ready, we can have a conversation. So when you're using CamCart, I use CamCart a lot to scan the business mm -hmm. cards but then uh, mm -hmm. it sounds like you're using it as a follow-up tool. I actually switched to a different tool that would mm. scan the business card in and upload it directly to a Google Sheet. And then I can take mm -hmm. that Google Sheet and put it into a, a CRM or customer relationship manager. Um, but I didn't really mm -hmm. know that CAM card could be useful oh, yeah. that way. How, tell us more about how you use that to um, when you're looking through it and trying to think, okay, I need to contact somebody, or is it just that initial one that you do and then you only interact with people who follow up with you? And then how do you keep that straight? So, so, so and of course, so for example, everybody that I met at Adam Adams, right? So of course you get people that you meet up again, but uh, first time I met them at Adam Adams, like in October, right? The, the October event, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So I would know exactly based on the timestamp and the way I noted it, met at Adams that I'm Denver, October 18, 2019, right? So that's the first thing. And guaranteed, usually within that week, I would also send them a follow-up email. So a lot of time it's going to be on my email tracking that I'm going to have that. But as far as... Um, uh, so then the other thing I also do is I would export the count card into my mail... So that's another place, right? So it's come can allow you that. So from the app itself, you know, you can download uh, it to a, a spreadsheet, right? And then turn around and upload it into a MailChimp as another way to, because like, for example, when I'm just sending, oh, we just closed on this deal or I'm sending a uh, happy 4th of July, you know, announcement or Merry Christmas announcement, right? I would mm -hmm. pull, and then of course I have tags in terms of where I met them and all that stuff. But if I want to go into detail of all my communication with them, I still have it on the email. Unfortunately, I really need to do a better job, which is funny because my background is IT, and yet I'm not using any of those CRM software. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to do, I need to do a good job with using a CRM software. I used to use uh, 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 Sugar CRM years ago, but again, it's just one of those things of uh, so many to do that I've just kind of prioritized, you know, my priority has been to get deals done and I'm getting way deals done more than I could handle. And uh, I'm getting way more leads on deals than I could handle. So other things kind of take a backseat, unfortunately, but, you know, um, so far, you know, uh, I've not set up one, but I really need to set up one. I'm also hearing that you're making good use of your email marketing. 
um, which I was not yeah. on your email mm -hmm. list for a while. I think my <laughs> husband was. I know. Yeah. He, he, says, he says, hey, did you know that Jack we just found something in Houston? I'm like, what? No, I didn't know that. And he said, well, why aren't you on Jack's email list? But I had to text you and say, hey, why am I not on your email list? Said, well, now, but I am. You, fell, you fell through the crack, you know? Yeah. You know, I mean, exactly. But now I'm seeing, oh, Jack's actually got a pretty good uh, traction on the email list. You don't send out a ton of stuff, so it's not annoying. But just enough to kind of keep it front of mind. So, And you said, um, so about tell us about your email marketing. Have you found... Um, that that's been a, a good source of meeting people and finding passive investors or finding deals? Yes. No, no, actually my email marketing. So I don't, met I don't have a email, email marketing to people that I've not, you know, met, you know, I, I take back, not physically, but people that I know. So say for example, you know, I, you and I meet, right. And uh, on via Facebook in this case, right. We have a follow up on conversation. You know, we all agree that, hey, I'll let you know when I have a deal, you know, and, you know, so then I would add you, right? So in other words, I already have that conversation with you and uh, there's already that kind of true contact with you by the time I have you on my email. So by the time you get my email, definitely has been, you can you will definitely remember me because we already had that kind of conversation. I know uh, uh, it's an opportunity to also just do mass email marketing. I've not done that. So with me, the only time, I send email apart from when I have deals is for branding. So say for example, you know, things like, you know, we close a deal, I would say that, or sometimes I would occasionally like, you know, we have a, uh, you know, a major thing with one of my properties. I want to just want to share, you know, how that property is doing, right? Uh, or, you know, a general announcement, like, you know, happy Thanksgiving or something. So. It won't be like you won't be getting an email from me like at least at this point no email like every week you're gonna get an email from me about something is it's gonna be on as needed basis okay about how often yes. do you think that you're sending those i'm seeing them maybe twice a month or so i would say and that's because we're raising funds right now right mm -hmm. and uh but uh uh before that so say for example you know so we had a deal in June, right? We started raising funds in June. The one we closed two weeks ago, we started raising funds for it in June. And uh, so between February and June, uh, I, I sent an email when I closed my deal in February. Mm -hmm. But I remember I sent any other email again. But that, those are mass. I still have, so, you know, from time to time, based on how you talk about investors, I still like that kind of direct email to you. Like, hey, Emma, I hope you're doing great. Or just a text message, right? Because, you know, actually when you know you're a strategic partner or a strategic passive investor, let's face it, you know, I have over a thousand investors on my list, right? And, uh, but, you know, that investor was 500K that they want to deploy. And you want to be on top of their mind so that when you have a deal coming up, you know, uh, all of a sudden they're not, they're not scratching their head. They were like, who's Jack? Oh, I met Jack uh, back in January at this event, right? So, and the same thing also apply with the co-sponsor, right? You know, you have certain strategic co-sponsor that, you know, work can, can execute. You want to kind of just have a regular, you know, check in on them, keep up with them. And, uh, and so that when the deal come, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy conversation. You're not just picking up from, you know, mm -hmm. nowhere. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you to do something. I haven't, I haven't mm -hmm. seen this on the call before. But, um, um, let, I want to do a little role play. Okay. So let, let's pretend, <laughs> do one of you want to volunteer to be on the other end of this conversation? Anybody? <laughs> I'm fine with it. <laughs> Emma, I'm game for anything you want. I, I missed maybe what you're doing, but I'm game. I will bust okay. on Jack that I'm not on his email list. Though the good news is I'm usually on his co-sponsor's email list, so I saw the last deal he did. <laughs> I'm not on that one either. <laughs> so I want to do a little role play 
let's say that you, let's say Frank, um, don't go all East Coast on him, but just be yourself, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> um, that you met him at an event. Mm -hmm. You came out and you did that best ever in Denver and you met him there. He sent you a follow up mm -hmm. email or something. You guys exchanged business cards and he says, let's hop on a call. Okay. So you hop on the call and I just want mm -hmm. you guys to have a conversation. Um, let's pretend that you're, you think Frank is going to be, um, a passive investor. He has some capital that he told you he needs to place maybe as you're talking in your conversation, or maybe you right. don't, maybe you don't even know yet if he's going to be more of a mm -hmm. post or passive investor. Or what, what did you just have in a phone call? So, so let's mm -hmm. role play this little phone call here. We can role play. We've actually had this conversation before, so we can do this. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <No. laughs> yes. So, so, yeah, definitely. Hey, Frank. Hey, how are you doing, man? Good, sir. Uh, how are you today? Frank? No, no, I'm here. Uh, okay. You know, internet thing. Let me just make sure. All right. So, um, well, it was great meeting you at the uh, at the conference, man. How was your experience? What was your general thought about the experience, uh, about the conference itself? Uh, I love the flow and the energy of uh, big conferences. Yeah. I always get a big kick out of them. I would go to as many as I possibly could. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially right now. How do you find about <laughs> it, by the way? You know, what, what is your thought? How do you find about the conference itself? Say that again. How did you find about the conference? Oh, like, I've known uh, about it for a while. I've known oh, Adam okay. for a while, so yeah, it was awesome. That's funny, you know, because you know, because you know, it's funny. Right before the uh, the conference, about a month or so before, I also met Adam. He had come to uh, Salt Lake City, and one of my friends, Emma, invited me to the event, and so I met him there. We had a great conversation. Invited us, you know, and so um, that's how I also find about the conference. So, uh, how long have you been doing real estate? I mean, just curious. Uh, I've been investing small time for about a decade. Oh, wow. And, uh, only, only in the past year or so have I started to buy some bigger stuff. Okay. Oh, nice. In what markets? Uh, so as an investor out of my own personal market, uh, I like the smaller markets. I like the markets that are not super hot, you know? So like, okay. I, I usually stay away from like the Miami's and the stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, no doubt. <laughs> You're not alone, man. Stay away from Miami, man. The rest of Florida is good, but you know, yeah, but you can find Orlando, you can find way better deal in Orlando than Miami, you know. You still get the same uh, same benefit of, you know, uh, friendly business, you know, uh, and uh, state with the um, uh, tax regulation that are business friendly, it's really towards landlord. So what, what so you bought that deal by yourself. But... So with me, I actually, I'm also looking Florida, by the way. So if you have any deal in Florida, please keep me in mind. I can, my focus right now is a general partner. Uh, but I've done deals in Utah, Idaho, Texas, uh, and Arizona. Utah is just my primary residence, but I'm looking for deals in Utah because I live in Utah. And, you know, uh, but Florida, you know, which is your market, is a market I'm super, super interested in. Uh, so just curious, why Florida? Why not South Carolina or other places? Um uh, I'm just looking at Florida because uh, I live up in Rhode Island and a lot of uh, people eventually retire to Florida, if you know what I mean, you know, but uh, no, I like the oh, markets yeah. you talk about too. I have, I have, uh, I've invested in uh, Amarillo. Right? I've, yeah. And I've uh, invested in Austin. Oh, nice. And uh, I like, I love Idaho. So, you know, I'd buy in more if I could. Nice. Nice. Well, you know, I also have a, I have a deal in Amarillo. I love that market. I'm very bullish on my, that market. You know, some people stay away from it, but here's my thought. I live in Utah. It takes the same amount of effort to go to Amarillo as to go to Dallas. And I know some people that I know in Dallas that would never go to Amarillo because they think it's too far. But to me, Dallas, Amarillo take the same amount of effort. I still have to fly anyway. <laughs> there you go. So just curious, are you looking uh, to be uh, a general partner uh, or are you looking to be passive? What's, what's your goal? What's your goal? Long term goal. My so I, I do both. Uh, I've invested right now in about mm, 10 different okay. syndications. Uh, I'm investing nice. in eight as a LP and two as a GP. Oh, wow! Nice, awesome. And so the one in Amarillo is one of your GP or that's LP? 
Yep. So the Amarillo deal, I, I bought into the general partnership. Okay. All right. I love it. So, so let me ask you one thing. If there's one thing I can bring to you, a value that I can bring to you, what value can I bring to you? You know, how can I help you grow your business? Um, well, if the right opportunity comes, uh, I'd be willing to invest as an LP in some deals. Or if you uh, had a little bit of okay. room where I could uh, give some kind of energy and active effort, I'd, I'd love to have the opportunity to participate on the other side as well. Absolutely. I will keep in mind for both, you know, both as an LP or a GP. In, uh, Thank you, sir. Now, what, what are you? All of the GP. Yes. I think the internet's a little choppy for us here, but uh, how can I help you? I mean, what's the main thing you're looking for? So, first of all, you mentioned you're looking for a deal in Florida. So let's do something in Florida. I would love to get a deal done with you in Florida. Just let me know if you find any deal in Florida. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for anything, 150 units or more. Uh, Bill 1980s or newer in any of the major metros in Florida except for the Miami area because I just think it's overheated like you indicated so you find something in there let me know I can play any kind of role that you need me for uh, you know I can come in as a KP help sign the loan right or I can come in as a GP or as a passive you know just depend on what role it is Right now, I gotta admit, you know, most of my deals, my deals have always been part of the lead GP, so that be my expectation. I will bring a lot, a lot to the table from, you know, the experience, you know, uh, helping bring in the capitals. I uh, have uh, a good chunk of, you know, partners that I can bring to the table to get the deal done. And so, pretty much, you know, you find a deal, don't worry about everything else. Let's get it done. I'll make sure that we help uh, get get the deal done. Yeah, so please keep me in mind and uh, have me on your mailing list, you know, and I'll do the same. Uh, keep me in mind if you have something um, that we can Sounds join awesome. process on. Now, one quick question on the syndication side. Do you usually awesome. do B's and or C's? Mm -hmm. No, I've only done mm -hmm. one C. All of them have always been B. So, Just wondering. So this is kind of a condensed version of 30 minute conversation. So Emma, uh, you know, as you can guess, yeah. it will be a lot more detailed conversation than this, you know, but at least given uh, talking to, uh, to Frank, so I know, you know, he's both can be both passive and investor and or GP, you know, the market that he has appetite on, of course, markets that have appetite on. I've had people tell me about other markets that I have no interest on, in. for example, you know, Kansas or, you know, um, Oklahoma City. <laughs> Those are my favorite markets, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you bring Florida? Because you know, I love Florida. <laughs> I, I, I made I, everything else was true, but I made up the Florida part. Uh, yeah. I would be oh, that's funny. In Florida, but <laughs> but uh, no, I have two deals. In, I have two deals in Kansas City. We we're just role playing, so I just made up yeah. the state. Yeah. Uh, uh -huh. I'm invested. Yeah. I'm invested in LP in two deals in Kansas City. <laughs> So I noticed I noticed a couple of things in that conversation oh, that I want to point out and summarize um, that you that that you did mm -hmm. very well. Um, obviously, at the beginning, most of us don't have a hard time just connecting with somebody, asking them about themselves, asking where they're investing, and, and all of that. But what a lot of us struggle with yeah. is making transitions into getting down to talking about the brass tax. And you just you say, you know, what are your goals? But you asked mm -hmm. straight out, are you interested in being a general partner, passive? What are your goals? Yeah, so you exactly. put it right out there. Mm -hmm. I think people tend to be on the bush uh, when they're asking for money because they feel like they're panhandling right. when people who are who are raising money are are offering opportunities. And so you you were not hesitant or shy about about just putting out there. What are you What are you looking for? Exactly. And then um, another yeah. trend uh -huh. you used very well was um, how can I add value to your business? And then he told you, you know, I'm looking to be passive. I'm going to be active. And if he hadn't said, he was like, no, I'm really not looking to, to invest passively. I'm, I'm really looking to get into a larger GP. You would have just said, okay, and run with that. You're mm -hmm. not looking for any particular outcome here. You're just getting to know him. And then I, I, the third thing I noticed was he has a mailing list. You have a mailing list. You know, yeah. I love, please add me to your mailing list and I'll do the same. Yeah. And so like, mm -hmm. may I please? 
to my mailing list. It wasn't awkward that way. You just put that out there and you're giving him value yeah. for value. Those are a couple yeah. of things I noticed that were very, very, yeah, and, and, and very you didn't, well. Right. You know, uh, I'll admit you make it for them to this the same in return, you know. Hold up, Jack. We got a little bad connection. Hold okay. up just a second. All right. Okay. That's looking a little better. You want to repeat what you just said there? Oh. Well, so uh, let me just say, so what I was saying is that, you know, <laughs> the whole thing, yes, yes. I, I offered my mailing. You <laughs> start <laughs> Sorry. I, I, I offer to you know him first to add my mailing list to him. So it makes it easy for him to you know mailing list to do the same in return. And usually, you know, you can you can always click with somebody, you know. There's also those, you know, sometimes you talk, let's let's face it, not everybody's you talk to them sometimes they're in good mood, you know, or something, and it's just based on how the conversation going. You can have to measure their mood and what they what they you know. What, what they're talking and sometimes you know it could end up being just a, a quick 10 minute call or a quick one hour call you know i was mm -hmm. i was um i was talking to so i met this guy on facebook and you know pull this out right and uh, i was driving to vegas half hour and it'd be like a one and action and you know at the end of that call basically you know key takeaway was this guy basically initially he came as the kind of guy who just want to invest his own money bought an 82 unit deal in ohio or about 80 unit deal in ohio just him by himself so he came initially as the kind of person who just want to do their own investment and not do much investment. and at the end of the call we basically discuss about it, uh, um, uh, him for building their selling. They have, they're going to be having a million dollars in uh, uh, that they're going to be looking forward to deploying. And you know, so was that a, just a small conversation? Somebody you pull off Facebook, Arabic, and one now. My problem is trying to find a deal. By the time they haven't sold yet, they haven't closed the deal yet. But by the time it closes, I'm hoping that you know I can partner up. Uh, boom, that's 25 percent of my million dollar deal. So usually, when you talk to somebody, I try to gauge exactly you know where they are, what's their you know investment path of progress, what they want to do, and just based on the conversation, you know, when you click with somebody, they'll be opening to you. And my goal is try to build that kind of you know repertoire, right? that kind of connection with them such that people feel comfortable with you they share with you about their goal they don't have to give very personal information at least when when you they share with you their goal they understand your goal you see uh you have some mutual you know kind of interest and kind of common goal and be able to basically drive on that and you know look for deals in the future so with me i'm always talking to somebody i know what they want so when i'm when I finally find a deal, I know like, oh, this person want add this, and this person want invest this, and so on and so forth. Okay, you're on mute, Emma. Oh, there you go. Now, now I can hear you. <laughs> so when we're doing, uh, business relationships, one of the reasons I like business relationships is because I feel like we have a common goal, and it's very easy to connect um, mm -hmm. over trying to get things yeah. accomplished. Um, I find them more forward and more rewarding sometimes than even the personal relationships because I feel like um, we just have a lot in common and a lot to talk about. And so um, I think that's something that you do really well, um, just connecting on a personal level, but always very, very personal at the same yeah. time. And um, it's just this wonderful mixture of very genuine, natural uh, Jack. You know, but you're you're just getting stuff done. You know, you're. Well, thank you. <laughs> yes. Well, I I look. Our time is just about 
winding down. Um, I thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate uh, hearing from you. And like I said, it's a very, yes, absolutely. it's mm -hmm. a very different perspective. Uh, like you said, as an mm -hmm. IT guy, I love how you're keeping it, uh, you know, kind of old school. Uh, the way that yeah, the way it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I need to improve. I gotta admit, I need to improve because there's gonna be a point whereby you know. Uh, my goal this year was to acquire six property, you know, so far I've done three and uh, or, or rather I'm on my third one and my goal is to try to get one more definitely before end of this year. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, I think I believe, you know, there's a lot of experienced guys out there and using the, you know, marketing platform. So it's something I'm going to need to improve on. It's just that I think I've been very lucky so far that, you know, my personal connection with people has been able to help me a lot. You know, like the old good old days, you know. Uh, but like I said, where you're where you seem to be very dedicated and what I've seen is just the follow up. You don't just go around meeting people, collecting yeah. cards. Uh there's always a mm -hmm. message or an email or or putting those cards into your to your system and making sure that uh you're staying top of mind by just being a just oh, being a guy who's there, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> um no, I think that's really handy. A lot of people. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The follow up is the hardest part of what they do, and it seems like um, you don't need a lot of fancy technology or thought leadership platform or oversharing or any of that stuff if you just put in the work to do the follow up. It's, it's just yes. a simple mm -hmm. formula. So, perfect. Now, as I know, that's why you you are involved in a lot of deals. People are pulling you in, or you're pulling them in. Uh, if you find the deal and mm -hmm. able to actually get the capital and get it closed because because of the you're just working now one thing about you i want to ask one last question um through all of this you're working full-time at a w2 so yes <laughs> how wait, wait. about how would you you are spending your time uh on mm -hmm. this basically Side, a side hustle for you, right? Business right. for you, uh -huh. which eventually will probably yes. be your full time job. But right now, about how much time per week and how are you managing, how are you doing your time management to be able to do that, have little kids and a side business like this? So, so my typical day starts at 6 a.m. and then in that end, usually after midnight, unfortunately. Uh, because if you think about it, um, you know, I like, well, I wouldn't call it 6 a.m., more like 7 a.m., 6 59, 7 a.m., somewhere there. Yeah, uh, and you know, usually I will wake up, you know, do a little bit of thing up on my emails before 9 a.m., and then, of course, 9 a.m., 9 a.m., yeah, and typically, you know, lunchtime is not the same anymore, you know, so kind of time to pick up those phones and reach up on those phones. And usually, you know, 5 p.m., get on it, you know, 5 till 7, you know, take. You know, dinner break with the family, put the kids to bed after nine. Majority of the work, actually, you know, those looking for deals, hunting for deals, uh, respond to a good chunk of those emails is between nine and midnight, you know. And then, of course, the next day in the morning, whatever could not finish by that day. Weekends, definitely. I'm a big fan of Starbucks. Unfortunately, they're closed right now. But before COVID-19, I, I used to go to Starbucks on Saturday. I would go to Starbucks 6 a.m., and be there till like you know 1 2 p.m and then come back home spend the rest of the afternoon uh with the family and then sunday do the same thing but sunday being sunday i'll probably you know um, six to like uh i don't know uh, 11 a.m then come back home of course even saturday night i'll put the kids to sleep unless i'm hanging out with my friend usually you know i'm doing my business stuff the same thing on sunday so it's, it's basically it's my my business is basically set Seven days a week, no break whatsoever. Um, good news, I told my boss I'm planning on retiring. I just need to figure out when. But I already told my boss, like, hey, I think I need to retire. Uh, it took a lot, of, a lot of guts, you know, uh, to tell my boss. But you know, I'm, I'm in that stage whereby I'm. I don't want to. I don't want to go tall on me and everything, and just work nine to five for my business, and 
you know, take a break and enjoy the rest of the evening with the mm. kids. But, you know, ex unless I'm, you know, in the middle of acquiring deals, usually this is, you know, when you're acquiring deals, it's usually around, you know, capital raising. That's when it gets most stressful because all the investor question is sense time sensitive. You know, if somebody asks me a question, I have that rule that, you know, I got to respond back to it the same, same day, right? And, you know, there's always somebody to call and somebody always has a question and, you know, co-sponsors keeping up, you know, with the co-sponsors. We can have regular calls, you know, you know, uh, which is very, very important because, you know, it's a, it's a team sport. So you got to regroup, you know, on a regular basis, touch base, see what's working, what's not working, what need to be improved on. And but while all this also still pursuing deals because brokers will always bring you deal because, hey, I tell you one thing. I have a deal. I lost a deal in um, Dallas. I know a broker, I mean, a partner of mine. We've never done a deal together, but he's a very good friend of mine or partners, like four guys who are leading on it. Actually, one, one of the KPs on that deal is a passive investor on my deal, the one we just closed two weeks ago. That deal, they were asking for $39 million, right? Uh, the broker who brought it to me offered me at $36 million and I was, I could have gotten $36 million. But I had two deals under contract at that time. And so it's like, Hey, I already have two deals under contract. So, um, uh, do I, what do I do? So basically, of course, I was trying to kick the can down the road on that deal. Of course. It, and then when that other partner got it for 39 and then I really regret because I'm like, man, I could have gotten this deal for $3 million less, you know? So, uh, when I'm looking for deals, broker will always still bring me deals and you never know which one of those deals is the next catch. You know, all my deals, I've always gotten them while I'm in the middle of the other deal. You no, know, a broker bring me a deal. Uh, and I mean, over another deal. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, so I, I want to get in that level where I can pursue more than one deal. So, Usually when I'm acquiring, a, in the process of acquiring a property, I'm still, you know, following up with the brokers. Usually off-market leads. I'm not calling brokers on a regular basis because that's usually what I do when I'm not acquiring a deal. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, when I'm in, in the middle of acquisition, if a broker brokers a deal, it's usually off-market deal. I'll definitely underwrite it and see if it pencil out. And those are usually kind of like the 10 p.m. underwriting. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so it's a constant moving in you know, a communication and to be Yeah, no. Yeah, that's my life. Yeah. Temporarily, it won't well, last I, forever, I promise you. I'm really looking forward <laughs> to your retirement party. Yeah. He throws a good party. So, you know, when you finally I I know I bug you a lot about when are you gonna quit your job, but when you do finally yes. retire. Yes. Yes, it's yes. gonna be big, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the way, I'm looking forward to it. Yes, just as another thing, I want to tell you why I'm a strong believer in those one-on-one. -on -one. You remember, uh, uh, I invited you to one of my celebration parties at Top Golf, like last year. When was it last? Last year, July, I think so. Yeah, you just closed the Phoenix. Bill. Yeah, and oh, you had a party for all your. Your partners yes. and you invite me. Yes, so and so invest. <laughs> yes, so uh, th that deal, uh, three partners who came to that celebration and end up investing on my next next deal. But what's more mm -hmm. important is that they connect me with other people, because you know you treat people nice, they always refer them. And so, so those people, so the celebration. Three guys invested in my Amarillo deal, right? And then out of that, they introduced more people that also invest in Amarillo deal, that also invest in Seabrook deal, you know, my deal that I just closed um, uh, two weeks ago. So, true, I'm a strong believer in one on one, and, you know, you treat people nice, it lose, you know, come in abundance. And, and just execute right. Make sure, you know, you treat investors right, you treat everybody right, not just investors, but everybody well, around you, everybody, you know. You know it will come around in abundance. Nice. No, that that yeah. sums you up pretty well right there. I love that. I love that mindset. So yeah. <laughs> does, does anybody does anybody have any uh, 
kind of last questions for Jack before we wrap, or Jack, you want to tell us how to get in touch with you? I'm okay. You know, yes. So, um, sharing my cell phone eight one one eight six three five three five four two eight nine. To you know, All right. um, shoot me a text, give me a call. I'm always available, you know, chat anytime. As indicated, I work till midnight, so you call, I'll reply to your text <laughs> or I'll talk to you at wow. nine. So, whatever time works for you, works for me. Yes, I pop that cell in the yes, chat. The tra mm -hmm. transcript will be available. I'm going to post this on YouTube and I will link you to it when it's done. And you guys, if you are yes. Salt Lake natives or locals or you're in town, you know, make sure to hook up with this guy because he's just one of the most genuine people in this business that I've ever met. Thank you. Thanks, Jack. All right. Thanks for coming, Thanks. everybody. Next Thank month, you. we will meet again last Thursday of the month. And one of Jack's friends, uh, Sandia. Cesarati is going to be presenting to yes. us. She's great. Uh, and she's going to basically share her journey from um, stock investor to real estate investor and just share with us how she gets you know, where she gets home. So appreciate everybody coming and we'll see you next month. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Emma. Thanks, Thanks, Jack. Have a good night. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.